Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to graph your data. Um, and so this is the same data that we talked about in the previous video on descriptive statistics. And it's the same data that's in the guide to statistical analysis and practice problem set um, packet. And so it's the same scenario, right? So we have researchers who are looking at the effect of low doses of antibiotic on gut bacteria. And we've got our uh, five mice that are in the control population that were not given penicillin, and then five mice that were in the experimental population that were given penicillin. Okay, and so in the last video, I showed you how to calculate average, variance, and standard deviation uh, by hand as well as using Excel. And so uh, the data down here, uh, I reorganized it for us. And so you'll want to do this before you graph. Um, here I have um, uh, this first column where it says group, and I tell you that this is going to be the data for the control group, and then this will be the data, the row of data for our experimental group. I then need my mean because that's what I'm going to graph. I'm going to gr graph the mean um, value for both my control and my experimental group. And then I'm also going to need standard deviation. And so um, I'm going to add that to my graph as standard deviation error bars once my graph is made. OK, so here we go. This is how you're going to do it. So I'm going to select my data, the data that I want to be graphed. OK, so I want to graph my two groups and I want to graph their means. OK, I'm going to come up here to insert at the top uh, ribbon up here and I'm going to insert a bar graph. And so I'm going to use this first icon. And the type of graph that we're going to use for the most part, probably this whole semester, um, is going to be a clustered column bar graph. And so I'm going to select this first one. OK, and so there we go. We got a graph. Um, it's not complete um, because we need to do some things, Let's put on some labels and change some things before it can be complete. Um, so what I'm going to do, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, I could come up here and have and click add chart element, but I actually like to use this little plus sign over here. So as long as the, the uh, graph is highlighted, um, I can make changes. If I, if I click off the graph, you'll notice that that plus sign goes away. So you have to be clicked on it and then you can do some edits. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add axes titles. OK, so I need to have my X and my Y axis clearly labeled so that the reader knows um, what I'm showing on this graph. And so I'm going to hit the plus sign and I'm going to click on axes titles. And you can see if when I just hover over that, you can see the two titles that come up. So I'm going to actually click on that box because I want them to stay. Now I can not hover over it and they stay. And so you can see that I can add a title on my X and my Y axis. And so I don't want it to say axis title, I want it to say what it is. And so my X axis here are my, my, um, my groups, my treatment groups. Okay, so I'm gonna label it that way, treatment groups. And I've got my control and I've got my experimental. And then my Y axis, in this case, I'm just gonna delete what's there and I'm gonna add my label. Uh, this is going to be um, the number of LAB, right? That's that particular type of bacteria um, uh, in feces or fecal samples, FE. Um, and I forget the, the, you wanna make sure that you put the, um, units and so number of bacteria per microgram so number of lab per microgram of feces okay so in, in our example from the lab when we're talking about the antimicrobial properties of garlic your uh, y-axis is going to be something like mean uh, diameter of the zone of inhibition in millimeters, right? So you're telling us what did you measure and what units did you use, okay? And the bottom would still probably be treatment group, right? So you're going to have water versus garlic. 
The next thing I'm going to do, so I've got my X and Y axes labeled, perfect. I'm also going to click back on that plus, and in a professional graph, a professional graph doesn't have grid lines. So if I come down here, I can actually get rid of the grid line. So I unclick that. So notice those lines that were just in the background here, they're gone. Okay, so again, a professional graph is not going to have grid lines. Um, a professional graph also will not have a title. I'm going to keep this here for just a second because I'm going to show you something else that we can do with it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add error bars. And so I'm going to click on my graph. I'm going to click actually on the bar. Um, and I'm going to go to my plus sign, or you could go to add chart element, either one. And I'm going to hover down to error bars. Now, I don't know what these error bars are that, that, that Excel kind of spits out, but they're, they're not correct. <laughs> so you don't want to just click on that. Instead, if you hover over this, notice the arrow that pops up to the uh, right, or the, the, um, yeah, the right of the, the title there, error bars. If I click on that, I'm then going to come down here to more options. And a new little window opens. And in this window, I can come down all the way down to where it says custom. custom okay, and I'm going to click on specify value and this little box comes up. And so for what we're going to do is your error bars, uh, you know, are you have to go up to the positive and, and to the negative. So for example, for your control group, your error bar should be point 0.895 above and 0.895 below. So one standard deviation above and below. And so I'm going to click on this first number, this first box here. This tells you how far up, how far positive. And so I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to select my standard deviations for both. That's good. And then I also have to do the same thing for the negative. So again, I'm just going to select them again. Okay. And so that I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. Those look much better. So those, those are for the control, um, a, almost one, not quite, but almost one standard deviation up and down. And the same thing for uh, the experimental, almost one um, standard deviation up and down. So that looks perfect. OK, so again, how did I get those? Let me close that out. I went to the plus. I went to error bars and I selected the arrow. I went to more options. I clicked on custom, specify value, and that's when this box comes up. And that's where you select your data for the positive error value. And then you also have to select your data for the negative error value. Okay, so there you go. I've got a graph. My axes are labeled. Um, I have my standard deviation error bars. So now there's really just one last thing that I need to do. Um, there are other things that you can do here. For example, if you didn't like the blue error bars, you can change the color to purple or you know, orange, whatever you wanted. So you can make those kinds of personal um, changes to your graph. Um, let's do this one last thing. So instead of a title, a professional graph gets a figure legend. And by now you've you've looked at a couple of papers, and so you've probably seen some professional graphs, hopefully. And so what I just am doing now is I drag my title from the top to the bottom here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my graph, so I've gotta actually click on the graph part, the plot area, and I'm going to just decrease the size a little bit. Okay, and I can push this up, okay? And so what, why am I doing this? I'm doing this to give me some room at the bottom so that I can put a figure um, title down here. And so I'll take off mean and I'm gonna put figure one. And then I'm just gonna write a little statement about what this figure shows. Um, so um, uh, number of uh, bacteria, you know, per microgram, that micro is not correct, I'm putting a U, anyways, microgram of um, feces in control versus you know, penicillin uh, 
this pool. I'm gonna put experimental. No. So just an, enough details for the reader to kind of tell what's going on here. Let me just see. I don't want it centered, so you have to right or left justify it. And it should sit right under here. And actually I'm gonna just decrease the font a little bit down to 12. Um, another way that you can do this, and this is actually the way that I wrote it, I think in my written directions, is just get rid of the title and then insert a text box. Um, that would work as well. Okay, so this right here is a, you know, a pretty good uh, graph. Uh, again, it's lacking grid lines. Um, I graph the means and I'm showing standard deviation error bars. Both my X and Y axes are labeled and I have a figure um, description underneath. Okay, so that's what we're looking for in your graph. You could then take this graph, um, you know, highlight it, and you can copy and paste it right into your, your Word document, or if you're making, you know, if you're doing this on Google Docs, you can paste it right into your Google Doc as well. Okay, so that's it for the, the graphing video.